2 sin theta cos theta is equals sin 2 theta. Remember I told you that at maximum height, theta is equals 90 degrees. Which means at maximum height, we have sin 90 degrees square over 2 times 10. You are welcome to physics class with Flash Isaac. Today, I'll be taking you through projectile motion. In one of my recent videos, I explained that motion is the change in position of an object with time. As objects move, they change position. So when we begin to consider the change of position of that object with respect to the time which the position is being changed, we can say that that body is undergoing motion. Change of position of a body with time is the same as the rate of change of position of a body. So, defining motion, you can say that motion is change in position of a body with time or motion is the rate of change of position of a body. This is because when we speak of rate, we talk about something that is changing with time. I also explained that the cause of motion is force. Force is what causes objects to move or change direction. And while explaining force, I introduced uh, Newton's law of motion. Because you cannot explain force and uh, motion without talking about Newton's law. While the first law of motion states that a body at rest will continue to be at rest. And if it is in motion, we continue in that state of uniform motion unless a force acts on that body. So the first law of motion is referred to as uh, the law of inertia. And in the second law, Newton stated that the change of momentum of a body is proportional to the force applied and takes place in the direction of the force. From there, we got that force is equal mass times acceleration. And the third law states that for every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. If I hit this uh, board, the, the force with which I hit the board is the same thing as which the board pushes me. So that is action and reaction. You may want to go through that full video. Now, projectile motion. Before we talk about projectile motion, let's talk about projectile. What is projectile? Projectile is simply any object that is launched or kicked or thrown or projected and allowed to fall freely under gravity. That is projectile. So when you throw an object freely and allow the object to fall under gravity, that object is referred to as projectile. So the only force that acts on projectile is the force of gravity. Now, what is why? Why dealing with linear motion, uh, Newton's law, we are dealing with acceleration, which is a horizontal force or force in a straight line. But in this case, we are not dealing with gravity. So a body true and allowed to fall under gravity. So the only force that acts on a projectile is the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is any force that brings all objects down to earth. So any object that goes up will surely come down. Why? Because gravity acts on that force. And that force of gravity is approximately a 9.8 meter per second square. It is acceleration due to gravity. Now that we know what projectile is, and we know gravity, and gravity acts downward. And from the first law of uh, motion, Newton's first law, it states that we got that V is equals U plus A T. Where V is final velocity, U is initial velocity. So um, we also got that S is equals U T plus 1 over 2 A T squared. So this is the distance, uh, initial velocity time, and that is acceleration. From there, we also got that... Uh, v square is equals u square plus 2as. So plus one other equation. So our equations of interest are 1, 2, 3. 
So now, when it comes to gravity, we no longer deal with A. So gravity pulls object down, which means, as we discuss acceleration due to gravity, or if the force acting on object is gravity, we introduce G. So in projectile motion, we don't introduce A. So acceleration becomes G. But it is negative because it's against the body. As the body tries to go, uh, go up based on its inertia, gravity is acting on that body, bringing it down. So it is negative. So this becomes negative. This means if you are talking about a uh, uh, force due to gravity, A plus A becomes minus A because linear is plus. As something comes down, it becomes negative. So minus A becomes minus G, which means this becomes V is equals U minus A T. Now, distance is uh, normal distance, horizontal distance. But as you do with projectile, we, be, we can talk, we talk about vertical distance also and horizontal distance. Vertical distance is not S, it becomes height. Because if you are measuring here, you can call this distance, right? But by the time it's like this, it's no longer distance, it's the height of the object. So this means uh, S becomes H is equals, we have UT. Now remember there is A here, so minus must come in, plus times minus, so minus half G T squared. So now for this, V squared is equals U squared plus 2 minus 2 G H. Projectile motion is simply the path taken by a projectile. That is what we refer to as a projectile motion, the motion of a projectile. If you are given a ball, you are here, now you kick a ball, the ball is at rest, as you kick this ball, the ball goes up, it's a predictable part, goes up, goes up, goes now, comes down. So let this be O, we can call here A, call here B. Now the ball is going, is going. Now the path taken by a projectile or the path through the projectile pa uh, pass through, you can call the, uh, the path trajectory. So this is a uh, trajectory. It's a very important question you can be asked. So the path is uh, called a uh, trajectory. While projectile is the object being launched, projectile motion is the motion of the projectile. Take note of these three things. Now, this is called the horizontal. So now, from here to here, it's called the horizontal distance. And in projectile, we call horizontal distance range. That's the horizontal distance, range of the projectile. Now, you notice, the ball is going, going, going. As the ball gets here, we call this the maximum height. Because the ball is at the maximum height. Now, when you're when you dealing with projectile, your knowledge of angles come to play. It is very important. For example, this is a straight line. By the time anything is raised or bent, we call that uh, body inclined. It gets inclined. As this is here, it's straight line. Remember, angle on a straight line is 180 degrees. As it raises, or I raise this here, I've inclined this on it. So an angle is formed. So when you, anytime you see something like this, or something like this, an angle is formed. Now, when the boy is here, we say the ball is at the maximum height. Now, let's say uh, the ball at this point. You notice this is the horizontal, right? So now, this is the velocity, J. Because the ball moves with uniform velocity, or it accelerates. So as you kick it, it begins to move. This is it. So uh, this uh, velocity is acting on uh, horizontal and vertical axis. If you are given something like this, this is y, this is s axis, this is negative y axis, and this is negative s axis. So at this point, this is the velocity, but it is inclined, right? So you can call this like this. It's inclined. So which means here is s, here is y, and this is the angle, theta. Now take note of this. When you are resolving angle, if this is the angle like this, let's say, this is A, this is B, or this is 10, this is 20. 
as you resolve this way towards this place, that's towards the horizontal axis, take note, you are closing the angle, right? Since you are closing the angle, we use cos. Cos. Now, if you are resolving towards y axis, it means you are resolving this way. The angle is opening. Since you are opening the angle, you use sine. So anytime in trigonometry, the angle is being, you are resolving towards the direction of the angle. You are closing it. You use cos. And when you are resolving towards the other direction, you are trying to open up the angle, you use sine. Take note of that. Now, S, you have Y. This is the angle. This means, we are resolving this U towards the S as is, we are closing the angle. You get? So it becomes U cos theta. Simple. Now, we are resolving towards this, uh, this is it. So we are resolving towards the uh, Y as is, is sine, you are opening up the angle. So it becomes u y is equals u sine theta. Similarly, here, this first part is the upward motion. Remember, anything that goes up will surely come down. So this part is the downward motion as the body tries to come down. Now, as it's not, uh, coming down, remember, this will be the uh, velocity. Because the body is, here is going up, here is coming down. So it's inclined here. So this is S. You can draw this. This is your Y axis. Now since it's coming down, it's towards the negative Y axis. So this means, here we are closing this angle. U along S axis equals U cos theta. Now across, uh, along, uh, resolving towards the Y axis, this is no longer upward. It's down. We are resolving towards the negative Y axis. You see? So this becomes u y is equals minus u sine theta. Now at maximum height, take note. At maximum height, uh, u y is equals zero. The horizontal component, the vertical component of the velocity is zero at maximum height. Why u s is equals u cos theta. Now that we have all these. What are the things you should know when it comes to projectile? What are, where are the places calculation come from? One, you calculate time of light. One, two, time it takes to reach maximum height. Because projectile has uh, time to reach the maximum height and time to come back. The time it takes to reach the maximum height is the time it takes to come back. So, time to reach maximum height. Three. Now, from here to here, you see, that is the horizontal distance. Where you kick the ball, where it landed. So the difference between them is referred to as range. So we call that range. And for maximum height. Now, take note that in projectile, the air resistance is always neglected. Because as you throw objects up, there are air resistances, forces that act in air to stop the body. And these forces act in opposite direction to the body. In projectile, we neglect these uh, forces. Now, time of flight is the time it, it takes for the body to go up and come down. So total time the uh, motion takes, time of the projectile. Now, the body goes up, it comes down. This means the displacement is zero. Because as you go up, let's say the height is uh, 2. You cover a height of 2 meters, you go up. While coming down, another uh, 2 meters. So, it cancels. So, height is neglected. This equals 0 for a projectile. So, we don't consider it while calculating time of flight. So, let's see. From the equation, h is equals ut minus 1 over 2 g t square now take a look at this in motion of a projectile since gravity is the only force that acts on it this means the horizontal component is neglected during motion because it's going up like this so we don't consider the horizontal component which means uh, this vertical component and this is the horizontal uh, component we will not consider here we are calculating time of flight because the motion is mainly upward motion 
So gravity or influence of the uh, horizontal motion is not being considered. So which means we are considered about u y. This gives us h is equals u y t minus half g t squared. Now look at something else. Remember, I told you that the height is zero because it goes up, it comes down. So we don't consider the height is uh, zero; it doesn't count. So which means here is equals zero is equals u y is this horizontal component of a velocity, which is u sine theta t minus half g t square. Now remember that this is the same thing as minus half g t square comes here to give us plus half g t square because as minus crosses the equality sign, it becomes plus. So minus half g t square is equals u sine theta t. Now given this, you will see that t square over t is equals u sine theta over 1 over 2 g. Or you can simply cross multiply from here to have g t square to be equals to u sine theta t. So where 1 t cancels 1 t from here, t becomes 2 u sine theta over g. So this is the formula for time of flight. So you can say t is equals to u sine theta over g. So that is time of flight in projectile. Time of flight is equal to 2 u sine theta over g. Why 2? Because the time of flight covers the time it takes to reach the maximum height and the time it, it takes to come down, which is 2 of them. What does this imply? This means if time of flight is time to go up and time to come down, this means the time to reach the maximum height will be equals u sine theta over g. That is the time it takes to reach the maximum height. So this is time of flight and this is formula for the time it takes to reach the maximum height or time of the projectile. Now, what about this? Remember, we are looking, let's calculate the range now. The range of the projectile. We said that range is from here to here. This means range is the horizontal uh, distance. While the maximum height we just uh, the maximum height is the uh, vertical distance. So range can we can from here h is equals u t minus half g t square. Height here let's range becomes horizontal distance. So no longer height or s. So arrow is equals u t minus half g t square. Now remember. When we were calculating for time of flight, I told you that when you talk about flight as the object is launched, the horizontal distance doesn't matter. This horizontal component is zero. Recall. Now, now that we are dealing with the horizontal, the range, this means the vertical component will not mean because we are dealing with the horizontal distance. So here it becomes very important. So, R is equals U S T. Now look at it. How gravity G does not act on the horizontal. Gravity brings objects down vertical. So since we are considering the horizontal range, G will not come to play. What does that mean? R is equals U S T because G is G is equals zero. So one over two minus one over two times zero times T square is equals zero. So everything here is zero. So it goes. What does that mean? So R is equals u s is u cos theta times t. We already solved for t, which is time of flight. So we sub simply substitute this t in instead of this t. So to give us u cos theta times two u sine theta over g. If you have this, we can simplify this to have. R is equals u times this u will give us u square over g times 2 sine theta 
cos theta. Now from trigonometry, 2 sine theta cos theta is equals sine 2 theta. From trigonometry, you can check out my trigonometry video and compound angles. I explain all this in details, which means this is the same thing as sine 2 theta, giving us r rho is equals u square sine 2 theta over g. This is the formula for range in project time. So we solve for time of flight, we solve for range, we solve for time it takes to reach the maximum height. So let's solve uh, for the last one, which is the maximum height. At maximum height, remember that uy is equals 0. So from v square is equals u square minus 2gh. Here is 0. So 0 is equals u square minus 2gh. So 0 is equals u sine theta. Since it is square, so everything squares minus 2gh. We are dealing with a uh, maximum height now. So this is the same thing as 2gh is equals u square sine square theta. So u, u square is u square, sine square is sine square theta. So this gives us h is equals u square sine square theta over 2g. So this is the formula for maximum height. So with this, we solve for time of light, time to reach the maximum height, range and maximum height. So we've really done a lot on that projectile. So now let's look at uh, three questions or four questions to test our knowledge of what we've done so far. Now let's solve these questions. And I'm going to be solving more questions with time in other videos. So feel free to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out any of my videos. Now remember that uh, in height, h is equals ut minus half gt squared. And we said that uh, for range, g is equals zero because gravity is not acting on the horizontal. So we said that uh, h is equals ut. This means if you're calculating range, range is the same thing as u cos theta because h is equals r when you're talking about the horizontal and ut. So u is u cos theta because the vertical u is not considered and t is time of flight. So if you are given time of flight in a, a question, or you've already calculated for time of flight, to get range, simply say u cos times time of flight. Now this is the formula for time of flight, range, and maximum height. Now remember, I said time to reach the maximum height, t is equals just u sine theta over g. Now, at maximum range, the angle is 45 degrees. So the angle that take, it takes to reach the maximum range is equals 45 degrees. This means, when they say at maximum range, this angle put it as 45 degrees or two, uh, everything here, um, 2 theta is equals 90 degrees or sine 2 theta is equals 1. Why at maximum height, theta is equals 90 degrees? Why, uh, look at this maximum height, you have sine square theta. This is the same thing as sine 90 degrees square. So, if the squares are facing everything, not only the 90 degrees. So, don't just square 90 degrees. So, if they are giving any angle in height, put the angle inside, sign the angle, then you square. So, sine 90 is 1, and the square of 1 is uh, 1. So, that is it for that. Now, we are told that a fruit is dropped to the ground from the top of a tree, 45 meter stop. How long does it take to reach the ground? This is simply a motion under gravity, projectile motion under gravity. The motion is starting from rest. It's dropped from a ground. That means it was from it was at rest, then it was dropped. So dropped from the top of the tree and dropped to the ground. So u is equals zero. And since u is equals zero starting from rest, then a is equals g because there is an acceleration under gravity. And the g is positive and not negative because it is coming down. So when it's coming down, you have plus g because gravity is favoring you. As you go up, it's countering you. So remember, u, h is equals ut plus half gt squared. Since it's coming downward, 
Now, we are told that it's starting from rest. This means here is zero. So h is equals half g t squared. So this is equals, uh, the height is 45. So 45 is equals 1 over 2 times 10 times t squared. 45 times 2 over 10 is equals t squared. Half times 10 is 10 over 2. So you need to multiply here, yeah? 45 times 2 over 10. Or you can simply say 5 here yeah? to get 45 over 5. Is equals t squared. So t is simply square root of 45 over 5. So that is that for the time it takes to reach the ground. Let's look at the second question. The second question says, a ball is thrown with a speed of 100 meters per second. Attain a height of 150 meters. So we have to calculate time of flight, angle of projection, and range. Now, if I calculate the time, of, we are given a uh, speed. Let's call the speed u is equals 100 meters per second. We are given h. So let's say h is 150 meter. We are asked to calculate time of flight. And from that formula, time of flight is equals 2u sine theta over g. So we have 2, we know 2, we have u, we have g, but we don't know sine theta, which means we need to calculate for theta. Very important. But as we are calculating for theta, we are indirectly calculating for this second question, which is angle of projection. So we simply say that from h, from h is equals u square sine square theta over 2g, because we have h and we have u. So we need this to calculate for theta. We can't use this because we don't have range, we don't have time of flight. So this means 2gh is over u square is equals sine square theta. Sine square theta is equals 2gh over u square. Sine theta will simply equals we look for the square root of both sides to so cancel this square. So this gives us 2gh over u. Because u is already squared. So the square root will remove one from here. Or you can just simply leave the u square here. So substituting. Okay, let's solve here sign. Theta is equals square root 2 times 10 times h 150 all over u square where is it 100 square so sine theta is equals 0 0.5477 and theta is equals sine inverse of 0 0.5477 so theta should be equals uh, 33.2 degrees so we've gotten theta Theta is equals 33.2 degrees. So we've solved the first question, which says angle of projection. That is theta. So time of flight is simply T is equals 2U sine theta over G. So T is equals 2 times U, 100 times sine 32.2 degrees over 10. That is time of flight. And the last one says a range. The range is simply u square. So range is simply 100 square sine 2 times 33.2 degrees over 10. That is range. And that is it. We solve for that. So point that in your calculator, you should get something like this. R is equals range is 916.36 degrees and T time of flight is 10.95. So this is approximately 916 degrees. Sorry. <laughs> 916. So uh, we can say meter or something. Okay, meters, 916 meter, uh, time of flight is 10.95 seconds. So we have that. Um, we've been able to resolve this question and the angle is 33.2 degrees question number three says a particle is projected vertically upwards 
with a velocity of 20 meters per second. What maximum height does it attain? So remember, maximum height is equal to u square sine square theta over 2g. So h is equal vertically upwards at 20 meters per second. 20 square times what maximum height does it attain? Remember I told you that at maximum height, theta is equals 90 degrees. Which means at maximum height, we have sine 90 degrees square over 2 times 10. So this means at maximum height, sine 90 degrees all square is equals 1. So this shows that any time you are giving me at maximum height, h is simply u square over 2g. So this will give you 20 square sine 90 over 400. Then you solve and get your answer. Wow! Hope you found this interesting and helpful. Thank you for watching. I am Isaac and this is Flash Learners. Subscribe to get more videos and don't forget to check out my previous videos. You will like them. Thank you.